Hey guys, so welcome to the day three video. Today we're going to be talking about crystals and how ionic compounds can form crystals. So yesterday we talked about the basic idea that basically an electron is transferred from one element to the next which causes one element to become positively charged and the other one to become negatively charged. We also talked a little bit about their basic structure that they form these like massive things right here. See, they all come together because of their charges, the positives and the negatives are sitting next to each other and they're all interacting together in this type of situation. So, Today we're just going to talk a little bit about why they do that. So the first thing you guys need to know is this is called a crystal lattice. When they all come together, they form this perfect arrangement of molecules, which again is called a crystal lattice. The reason they do this is because it helps them to gain a little bit of stability. You guys know atoms and elements are always trying to gain some sort of stability to be in a good situation where they are at a low potential energy. When an element is sitting by itself and it has this charge and it's not interacting with anything, it's basically just looking for something to interact with. Once it finds another element, like let's say this is the chlorine, it's the negative one. You guys know that the negative ones are always or usually bigger. And these are the little sodiums. Once it finds the sodium, its, little, its negative charge is balanced out by the positive charge of the sodium. And they form this nice stable crystal. This NaCl is table salt, like what we eat at the dinner table, right? All right, so the really cool thing about these crystals, and there's a video that right after this, you guys are going to go watch this video. The cool thing about these crystals is their arrangement actually determines the shape of the crystal overall. So if I see a crystal that is arranged in this way, this is a cubic shape, right? If I go and I look at an actual larger crystal of NaCl, it will be shaped like a cube. And that's because down to its, if you zoom in, deep, deep, deep into the crystal and you actually look at the crystal lattice, these are arranged in a cubic structure. If you look at these crystals, you'll see that their elements or their atoms in their crystal lattice are arranged in a more rectangular structure. If you look at something like this, you'll see that the atoms inside are arranged in, in a uh, hexagonal structure, right? So depending on how the atoms are arranged in the crystal lattice, you're going to get different shapes of crystals of the entire structure, right? All right, so as soon as you're done this video, you go and you watch this. And it is found on Shobi. It's already there. You don't have to look for it. All right, so the reason they form these types of structures is because of different forces of attraction and repulsion. If there's a lot of attraction between the positive and the negative ions, they're going to come closer together. If there's more repulsion, they're going to go further apart. And depending on how they're attracting and repelling each other, you're going to get different shapes. See here? This would be an atom, this would be an atom, 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 and one in the middle. And depending on how they're attracting each other or repelling each other, they're going to end up in different situations. Right? Okay, so if you zoom in to an NaCl crystal, this is its crystal lattice. These are its actual crystals. I know that this is a little bit crazy to look at because salt doesn't always look like this, obviously because it's cut up in different ways, but NaCl does have a cubic crystal structure. All right, and the last thing we need to talk about is crystal is lattice energy. The lattice energy basically is talking about the amount of energy that holds all of the atoms together inside of the crystal lattice. 
So it's the energy released when one mole of an ionic crystalline compound is formed from a gaseous ion, meaning that if more energy is released upon building the crystal, it means that it's gained more stability, right? So if I look over here, I'm going to find different types of different lattice energies. NaCl actually has a pretty low lattice energy, while uh, calcium fluoride has a pretty high one compared to NaCl. This basically means that NaCl, the bonds between the sodiums and the chlorines, are actually weaker than the bonds between calciums and fluorides. So if I take sodium chloride and I put it inside of water, it's going to dissolve in the water. Because the bonds between the sodiums and the chlorides are not extremely strong. But if I take something like magnesium oxide, which has a very high lattice energy, and I put it in water, I shake it up, it will take a lot of energy for me to actually break this and dissolve it inside of water. So this basically just determines their solubility. If you have a low lattice energy, you're highly soluble in water, meaning that you dissolve very easily because your bonds are weaker. If you have a very high lattice energy, your bonds are a lot stronger, meaning that the atoms inside of the crystal lattice are more strongly attracted to each other. And if I tried to dissolve them in water, they would need a lot more energy to make that happen, right? All right, so that's the basics. Remember to go through the checklist on Shobi and now go and watch this video before starting anything. And then you do your worksheet and the quiz. Don't forget, you have to do it all. All right, guys, good luck.